Hello everyone, today I wanted to take a look at a application that's vaguely similar, at least in, in basic functionality, to one that I had to create for a, I think it was an eight week summer course that I took at uh, college. So the basic idea was over the course of the semester, you were to create an application where users could uh, post events, people could then join the events or leave the events and you would you know show all of the users that are uh, participating in this event. It was pretty simple, uh, as most college projects usually are, uh, but because it was a database class, a lot of it had to do with, you know, the database relations. And it, because I was using Rails, um, effectively, I didn't have to learn anything for the class because Rails kind of just handles most of it for you. You basically just create like a little join table and then you're, you're largely done. You do that with the model, you call it like joinable and then <laughs> you're, you're pretty much good. So we're just gonna go ahead and step through this. I'm not gonna like style it and add in the rest of the functionality. I just wanted to cover the like core concepts. Uh, but for a point of reference, I think our first planning session was like a week into the semester. And by the time I showed up for the planning session, uh, I showed the professor the application working in Rails and said, I think we should build something like this. Uh, with the joke being that it was already done, of course, uh, which is always a fun way for me to like look back at uh, sort of how productive you can be with Rails uh, within the span of like an hour. And this video is definitely not going to take an hour. But we're going to go ahead, we're going to get started. I'll start the timer, type Rails new video. We're not going to be using any sort of uh, any sort of ES build or bootstrap for this. It's just going to be a pretty bare bones application. We are going to have to use device because we want to have users. We're going to use uh, action text because I figured, you know, that was a basic piece of functionality that should have been in the application. Uh, so I'll go ahead and add that again and we'll just go from there. I'm going to drag this over, close the web welcome page, hit control plus to open up or increase the font size. We can come into the gem file. We can add device gem and we can say device come over to our terminal, run a bundle install command. That'll work. We can then do a rails G action underscore text colon install, which does add the active storage now. Okay, so that takes care of that. Next, we have to deal with all of the migrations. This can be a little bit tricky, uh, but let's try and step through this. So first we have to do our device. We'll say rails G device colon install. We can then do a rails G scaffold for, or let's do a Rails G device user for our user model. We can then do a Rails G scaffold. We'll say this is for the, we'll say this is for the events. And for each of these events, we wanna give them like, uh, let's say a name, uh, and we can just go with that for now. Next, we wanna create the join model. We can just say Rails G model, we'll call it uh, joinable. We'll say it has an event, which is references and a user colon references because we've already generated both of those migrations. So that should be good. If we come into DB migrate right here, we can see we have the uh, create users events. So then our joinable is references both of those, that's fine. And then we have our action text and active storage. So now let's go ahead and let's do a Rails DB colon migrate, make sure this worked. Looks like it did. Okay, cool. So let's come over and let's actually do a Rails G uh, controller dashboard home. So we'll do a dashboard instead of an index page this time. We can do a Rails S to start our server. Come over here to localhost port 3000. Takes care of that. Let's come into our app, our models, and let's go into our user model, our event model, and our joinable model. I'm going to F11 here so that I can see what I'm doing. For the uh, various models here, we'll start with the events, uh, which is going to be this one right here. Close out the gem file. For the event, what we want to do is say this has, oops, has many joinables, and this is going to be dependent destroy. It's going to have many users through joinables, and then it's going to has rich text, which is going to be the body. The autocomplete here is coming from GitHub Copilot and Tab 9's free version, if you're curious. We can then come over here to the user model. This is also going to has many joinables. And then we can also say this is going to has many events through joinables. That takes care of that. Our joinable model here, uh, you can optionally add a little bit extra to it if you wanted to do some semblance of like uh, validation. We're not going to do that though. So this takes care of all three of our models. Next, let's come into our controllers, our events controller, scroll down to the bottom. We have the name, but we need the body that takes care of that. We can now come over to our homepage. So we'll come into app views, 
uh, dashboard and the home page. Uh, in here, first thing we need to do is uh, let's actually do a logout button. We'll say link to logout, destroy user session path, method delete. But because this is Rails 7, it does have turbo and devise now requires a turbo underscore method colon colon delete for a logout button to work. That'll work, but of course, what happens if we're uh, not logged in already? Well, we need to do a before action to authenticate the user in the dashboard controller. So if we go to the dashboard or the home or the root of the application, it'll tell us to log in. We could still view events without uh, going to this page, but this alone should cause us to have to log in. Let's come into our config and our routes.rb because we want to change the root of the application to be the dashboard controller home action that should now cause us to have to log in. So there we go, we can click sign up. For the sign up, uh, I'll just do a dean at example.com. I'll hit control A, control C, control V and control V to make my password my email, just so it's a bit faster to get through that. If I click log out, that now works and then I can log right back in, so that's good. Next, let's come back over to our homepage. Uh, we have the events currently set up, so what we can start to do now is we can hit F11, I'll hit control plus so we can read this a bit better. What we can do is we can say current underscore user dot events dot each dot with underscore index. We want to start this at one. And this just allows us to have both the event as well as the index. So it's kind of like a for loop where we can also access which uh, iteration through the loop we are. This will do uh, an H2. Uh, we can do a, uh, let's do a span, I guess. I'll tap that over. So we have an H2 with a span that has the index inside of it. And then we can close the span around this index. Oops, let me close the span. Around this index, we can do some square brackets just so it looks like that. And uh, this didn't work, there we go. Something like that. Now after the H2, let's uh, do a, uh, let's say event.title, something like that. That works. Okay, now let's do a, uh, let's do a link underscore to show event, which will take us to the event. That'll be good. And then we can do a, yeah, let's do a pipe and we'll do a, uh, a link or no, let's do a button too, because we need to be able to uh, actually post this where we'll say leave event. This will take us to the joinable event path, which takes in an event. We have to create this joinable event path. For that, that's going to be in our routes. So over here, we have our root, our resources, and our device. Above all of this, let's just do a quick little route, which is going to be the joinable event path, which is going to be a get to slash joinable events slash ID colon dot colon format. There we go. So that'll give us a nice little thing. We can now do a post because this actually needs to be a post, not a get. Uh, we can do a post to joinable events. Uh, slash colon ID to joinable events. Uh, and this should be, uh, or no, this needs to be the events controller and we'll just do a joinable action. Oops. Uh, just because I don't want to create a second controller for this. This is kind of like supposed to be a fast video, not a, a proper code where we do everything super properly. But this at least gives us a route that we can now use, uh, which means inside of our events controller, we do need to def joinable event. Now for this, uh, let's see, how do we want to do this? Um, one of the things we need to do here is uh, at the top, we have the before action set event. Let's set this to include the joinable event. That takes care of that. So now we have access to the uh, at event. And now what I want to do is let's say uh, if current underscore user dot events dot include question, oops, question mark uh, at event, right? So if the event includes it, we then want to call events delete. Uh, and then if it doesn't include it, we want to add it to the list of events the user's in. Uh, and then after we do that, let's redirect to, uh, let's just do the event URL for the at event uh, with, uh, I guess, a notice that says you uh, have left the event, sure. And then we can do the same right here, redirect to the event URL with a notice that says you have joined the event. That seems good to me. Let's come over to our homepage. If we refresh, nothing should be broken. That looks good. So uh, I'm actually gonna copy this, open up a new tab and go to slash events. There we go. Uh, so that's our events page. Let's create an event. We need to add the uh, rich text body. So let's come over to our side panel, come down to our views, our events and our form for this. Let's copy the name. We'll put it down here. We'll change this to body. We'll copy this, paste it right here. This will be a rich text area, something like that. 
hit F11, come over here and refresh. There we go. Test and case. Uh, let's create this event and now let's edit it and let's try to attach an image uh, from somewhere. Hopefully this will load sometime this year, please. Okay, let's come over to uh, just somewhere where I have some pictures. Uh, sure, let's grab the Minecraft picture. Let's click update and let's refresh. Uh, this might not work because uh, it could potentially, uh, it's not showing because we haven't added yet. So let's come over to our event partial and let's add the body right here. Save this F11, come over here, control R. There we go, so that's working now, cool. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, that's probably one of the harder parts done. Um, let's come down to below the body and let's do a div and let's close the div. For this, what I wanna do is say, if we are the current underscore user, uh, I want to do, oops, do something. I don't know why that's hot keyed again. Uh, if we're the current user, I wanna do something. I wanna say, uh, let's do like a uh, joinable text is equal to current user dot events dot include. I've used this twice now. If I use it one more time, I should probably refactor it. Uh, and we'll say leave event if we're a part of it. Else, let's do a join event. Again, this is speedrun code. Don't don't put a ternary inside of your uh, inside of your actual code. Uh, that's what controllers are for. Okay, so VS Code is totally broken again. My control enter is now my uh, copilot hotkey again. Uh, let's do a strong here with the uh, joinable text just to make it match what the rest of this page looks like because uh, it always has the joinable. And then right here, let's do a button to a joinable text, which takes us to the joinable event path. This does not need the put. Uh, that is optionally something we can include, but let's come over here and refresh. I'm gonna hit enter in the terminal, click join event and see what happens. We join the event. The action joinable could not be found for the events controller. Events controller has a uh, joinable event. This needs to just be joinable, I'm assuming. Uh, to joinable events. Let's come up here and let's also change this to joinable. You can come over here and refresh, hit enter a few times, scroll down here, click join. I saw green text, so we've officially joined. Let's come over to our homepage and here we go. So there's an issue with the title. I don't know why I called this title, but let's change this in our dashboard home. Uh, this needs to be name, I guess, and we can refresh. Okay, so that's working. We can show the event, takes us to the event, pretty cool. Let's hit enter here and let's click leave event. Make sure that's working. Uh, we've deleted from it. Now, if we come back to our homepage, it's gone. Cool. So that's working as intended. I'm now going to click, uh, oh, actually, I'm going to refresh, click join event, hit enter come over here and refresh. There we go. So I'm now a member of this. Let's go ahead and let's show who else is a member of these events. So let's come over to the event page and I guess below the current user, uh, we'll just do another div, something like this. Uh, we'll close this div. And then right here, what we'll do is we'll say, event.users.each.with underscore index one do user oops user comma index something like that this is oh i did it again this is again the second time i think i've written this line of code so one more and i should probably consider refactoring but thankfully i think we're almost done here i'm gonna hit tab here so we're gonna have the span with the index for the user and i'll just say user colon uh, and we'll wrap this in a strong tag right paste this over here oops over here and we'll just do a slash right here uh, and then instead of having uh, well I guess the user email makes sense because if we do this it should now list who's a member of this event looks good and now let's hit control shift n come over here and go to localhost port 3000 should ask me to sign up good I'm going to sign up as john at doe.com and then I'll do the same thing. I'll just paste in the info. Okay, so John can't see any events yet. Let's go over to localhost port 3000 slash events. Uh, and then let's come over here and let's click join event. And now if we scroll down, John and Dean are both a member of this. If Dean refreshes this page, Dean will also see both of these members. If John comes over to the dashboard page, John can see this event that they've registered for and Dean can see this event as well. If Dean leaves this event, it should not impact John seeing their event. So there we go. Uh, I think at this point I can hit this button because I think we're actually done. Okay, so that was pretty quick. There is a lot to cover there. Uh, of course, it's a little bit messy code, but you know, you, you get what you pay for. It's a free video. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting exercise, I think, because on the one hand, it's good to give students the creative freedom to say, use whatever tool or environment you would like. 
Uh, but on the other hand, due to a lot of the Rails magic that's done here, at no time did I even have to concern myself with what a primary or a foreign key are. I didn't have to really concern myself with database normalization because uh, I was just kind of cruising through here. That said, I don't think a junior dev is going to like, you know, necessarily know how to do this in 12 minutes. Um, but considering this was the core piece of what was required for this course, sure, it was a summer course. Uh, I think it probably could have been handled a little bit better. Uh, and it probably would have been more beneficial to say, you know, you have to manually create the database as opposed to just creating an application. That said, I think it was the only course I really took uh, where I was actually required to build something with requirements uh, that wasn't just vague, uh, make something for the sake of making a project. So that was interesting. Uh, but, you know, overall, the, I guess the point of the video is just like, you know, this is sort of what I had to do for four years. Uh, so if, if you're wondering if you're capable, I promise you, you are more than capable. This stuff isn't hard. Uh, this is just rote memorization. Cause remember at this point, uh, how many videos does my channel have? Uh, I think I'm at like 300, yeah, 340 videos at this point. I've probably done this process like 300 times. Uh, so if you're comparing yourself to this 12 minutes, remember, I do also always have notes, uh, even when I'm, uh, you know, playing up the part. Uh, and it's really not uh, that bad once you've done it a couple hundred times. That said, doing it a couple hundred times does make you realize that when you were playing RuneScape as a kid, uh, you were actually practicing for working in the real world. <laughs> but that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it beyond just listening to me talk. And hopefully I will see you in the next video.